And this right now, like, he'd be booing me, probably. <laughs> Tell me, get up, you're talking too much, sit down, yeah. So, everybody, raise a glass to TJ. Yeah. Best man ever, best man ever, yeah. to TJ. Yeah. Chris Andriotis, uh, TJ and I met on the first day of prep on the train in the boot line. I hated his guts. <laughs> the whole first year, we fought every single day on the train. I was a Celtics fan, he was a Knicks fan, and we argued and really did not like each other at all. And uh, at the end of the year, we started, we each got a girlfriend who happened to be best friends. So we were forced to spend time together <laughs> to keep the girls happy. And uh, it turned out we had a lot in common and we really ended up getting along pretty well. And uh, we've been friends ever since. Uh, a lot of stories I can't tell. I just, you know, the way that he could light up a room and make himself the center of attention in about two seconds. Um, just an amazing person. Uh, he's the, uh, he's the godfather of my son. And, uh, I remember he rolls, so he comes out to Arizona, of course, you know, last minute flight, barely making it in, and, uh, go through the, go to the church, the whole thing, and they have a, you know, party back in my house, and before I know it, he rolls out in a leopard print thong. <laughs> We were outside, it was an outdoor party, and there was a pool. Nobody was swimming in it, though. And all the, all the ladies were like, oh, you know, this is, this is ready to party. So anything he could do to steal the show and make himself memorable, he would. And uh, just so many good times. And it just, whenever I start thinking about it and I start to get upset, you know, I think he's up there saying, don't cry, you puss, don't do that. <laughs> don't be that guy. And uh, he's, he's up there watching, telling dirty jokes to St. Peter right now. <laughs> um, and his last revenge was making a sing the fight song. <laughs> Terribly. <laughs> like, like the priest said in the homily, he wasn't gonna get topped. He always came out on top and, and he did that. And that, you know, he lived life to the hill and if anything to take away from it, um, just live every experience to the fullest, you know. And he always told everyone how he felt about him. He always knew where he stood. Thank you. said this the other night, TJ was my friend, and I'm sure everybody could say that tonight, today. Uh, we had a gathering the other day, and uh, I wear my heart on my sleeve, and I'm sure everybody here is touched by that man, so I don't have to repeat that. But following these guys with some really good funny stories, um, we had a dad's night show on Friday night, and after every guy coming down the stage, I would always pound their hands and I said, good job, each guy. And then when TJ came, I would say, good job, little man, good job. <laughs> Seeing here how much he's touched everybody, how much we love him, how much we care about him, how much we miss him, how much we're hurting. You just look up and say, good job, little man, good job. But I won't end it there because I like to top him. <laughs> So when I, I'm from the Bronx, and uh, I consider myself very well to do in the drinking area. 
So I, I would hang out with TJ and we had a couple of drinks and I would say, you guys don't know how to drink. And I said, let me take you to uh, Arthur Avenue and Rory Dolan's and we'll have a really good time. And he said, what do you like to drink? I said, At that time I was drinking gin and tonics. And he goes, all right, so no problem. So I get a limo, Chris Rigg, Fats, I think uh, we had a few other guys in there, uh, James Sheehan. So we're there, and I'm drinking gin and tonics. Needless to say, he switched my tonic with gin. So I was just drinking gin and gin for me. <laughs> so we get to the Bronx, I can't get out of the car. I just can't. <laughs> and my friends are waiting for us there. So they whirled in, and thank God my friend Jimmy Gallagher was there. He goes, are you with John O'Brien? He goes, yeah, I'm, I'm these guys. Where's John? He's in the limo, he can't get out. <laughs> I didn't get out of the limo the whole night. Six hours later, they were still out ha having a good time drinking with the guys. The next day I get home, I don't know how I got home. Uh, my friends called me and they go, are you all right? I said, yeah. I go, do you have TJ's number? I go, no, wh what do you need? He goes, we have an extra ticket to the Yankee game. We want to take him instead of you. <laughs> he's, a, he's a much funnier guy than you, and he's younger, so. I finally admitted it. He is funnier than me, so God bless. Um, my name is Tim Murphy, um, and I'm from down the shore. And I've known TJ my entire life. Um, TJ was uh, a brother, um, an idol. I looked up to him in every way. And from when I can remember, he treated me like I was part of his family. And he just made everybody around him feel like you were having a special time when you were around him. And to me, that's the mark of a great human being. If you can make people around you better, that's what I aspire to be. And that's what I want to, that's what I want to take from this is I want to try to make people around me better. Um, and here's some, you know, two, two quick ones. Um, when my father passed away about five years ago, um, Moore's father passed away the same day. And uh, TJ went to the services with, with his family. And he told Moore, he said, I'll be back in two hours. Got in the car, drove two and a half hours down to my dad's service, got in line, gave me a hug and a kiss, my mom, my sisters, my brother, turned around and drove all the way back. That's the type of person he was. Um, second story was just recently, um, he, I worked for a winery um, in California and he's, you know, over the years he's asked me to, for donations to charity events. So just recently, <laughs> just, hang on, hang on. so just recently he goes, hey listen, you know, we're having a charity event, uh, you know, would you mind donating wine for the charity events? Absolutely not. He goes, ah, whatever you need. So I met him down in Spring Lake Heights. And, I bring the wine into the house, three red, three white, <laughs> all of a sudden, rips open the box, grabs a bottle of wine, I'm like, dude. I'm like, charity. He goes, it's not all for charity. <laughs> As you know from our videos, I'm very shy with TJ. If anyone wants a copy of The Star is Born, I'll be selling them afterwards. <laughs> I'm really going to screw TJ up right now because TJ I may go solo next year. So, so I got a few quick stories about TJ, some of them about how wonderful a guy he is. And I'll start with that one first. So we used to talk all the time about his dad and his dad going to assisted living place and you know, kind of losing his memory and things like that. And eventually I went through the same thing with my mom and TJ was unbelievably supportive, would talk all the time. And eventually I put my mom in an assisted living place, um, which was heartbreaking and went through that. And one day I'm visiting my mom and uh, she's like, oh, you're a little friendless here today. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, she doesn't remember what's going on. She has no idea what's going on. I said, what do you mean my little friend? No, that the, the little guy I was dancing with at the golf at, at your golf at your go, at the golf course, and I'm like, TJ, I don't know his name, but I, it was that little guy, very nice. He stayed here for like an hour and a half. 
So then I, I ask the front desk and I look at the, the paper who signs in and TJ went to visit my mom. I'm like, who does that? He just went and found out where she was and visited her one day and hung out with her, which is just amazing. But Kelly brought up a story, um, and, and Kelly and Mara were off the charts, thank you very much, it was tremendous, um, about there was a guy in the hospital. I was the guy in the hospital, and I just got operated on, and I'm sitting there, I got a curtain around me, and I'm laying in bed that night, and the curtain opens up. Who's there but TJ with a bottle of red wine? <laughs> and he goes, hey, dude, you need some help here. I'm going to give you some red wine. He takes the plastic cups that they have at the hospital, <laughs> opens it out of the wrapper, you know, and more than that. I just got operated. I don't think I should drink that. He was like, no, nah, no, nah, it's good. It's blood there. <laughs> so he pours a big glass and like a dope. I'm drinking it with him. I'm saying, and, we're, and we're talking like we're in a bar somewhere. The nurse comes to lunch. She goes, what are you doing here? He goes, what, what is, she's like, what is that? He goes, it's a blood thinner. <laughs> the nurse literally just slammed the door and just walked out. We finished the bottle of wine. That was it. I was like, it was a beautiful story. So... <clears throat> We also talked about TJ being a coach. So TJ loved the coach and he loved the screen, like screen. So I'm sitting there on the other side one day and he is going nuts. As Morris said, face red, yelling, the, the ref's like, calm down. And I'm there, I got the video camera just rolling. And in the middle, he just stops, he goes, are you videoing me? You're videoing me? He yelled the course, goes, turn up the video, turn up the video. I'm like. Nope. <laughs> I still have that video if anyone wants it. But listen, this is a day for the king. He is the king. He deserved everything. I loved him. I'm going to miss him um, beyond compare. Um, and we all are. But uh, God bless you, TJ. Love you. out to everyone at IJ saying to make a video about how you see God in your life. And my dad really wanted to do it. And I was like, no. <laughs> no. And then it was like, we forgot about it. And it was like, done. And then like one more email came out and was like, last chance. And he's like, Aaron, if you're not going to do it, I will. And I was like, oh, no. So I did it with him. And of course, he was winking at the camera, making jokes. And I was like, <laughs> and then I just thought it was going to be sent to like alumni or like people, like girls coming next year. And then one day we had like a mass at our school and then afterwards the video comes up. <laughs> and I'm like, I put like my head in my hands and I'm like, no. And then like my video comes up and everybody just turns their head towards me. And everyone's like dying laughing. And I was like so embarrassed. <laughs> But after the video and like throughout the day, like people were coming up to me that I haven't even talked to in my entire life. People like didn't even know. We're like, oh my gosh, your dad is so funny. Like that made my day. And like I, I was like, what? Because I didn't know like any of these people who were coming up to me. But yeah. <laughs> Patrick Giblin, for anyone that doesn't know me, I went to prep with TJ. Um, unlike Chris, we met the second day of school and we were instant friends. He was, <laughs> he was coming from the bad streets of North Caldwell walking through downtown Jersey City. I don't know if he weighed 90 pounds, let alone 100 pounds. He was 13 years old and he was walking like he owned the place. Um, just 
introducing himself uh, from, from day one. So we, we hit it off pretty quickly. Um, the great thing about TJ is you became friends with him and you just knew he had hundreds of other friends. Um, as I learned over the last week, it's really thousands. So even, even with that, knowing how expansive his network of friends and, and everything were, you, he always went out of his way to make, um, to make you feel special, to be a part of your big celebrations. Um, you know, we, we started 15 or so years ago at a, a uh, celebration in the city. TJ would call it our gentleman's lunch, myself, him and Chris uh, at Keens. And we thought this was like a big deal. And then I, as I learned on, you know, reading these comments on Facebook and LinkedIn, he was doing this with about a hundred other people. <laughs> We thought, we thought this was like a really special thing for him. And it was, and he made you feel that way. Um, but too many stories, one quick one that uh, came to mind. Um, we went off to college, I went to Villanova, he's at Scranton, and we're freshmen and we each, you know, kind of figure out the best place to party, of course, when you're a freshman in college is the rugby team. So sure enough, we end up going out to play Scranton in rugby. And uh, I hadn't seen TJ really since we had gone away to school. We didn't have cell phones, no email. We really didn't have a way to keep in touch. So the game is about to start. And maybe I somehow let him know I was going to be out there. So, you know, of course, the pregame ritual is a bunch of guys snarling at each other like they're going to kill each other. But TJ breaks away from the team to come over to say hello. His rugby teammates are like, what the hell are you doing here? Um, he says, no, I know this guy. Um, and then again later, there's some injury or something where I was in the ground and I look up and there's TJ and his teammates again snarling. I'm like, just leave this, <laughs> you know, he's, he's, on the, he's on the opposing team. Um, but that's who he was, just incredibly loyal. Um, one of the only people I know that sends happy anniversary texts to me. Um, you know, he was part of my wedding party. And he just cherished all those special occasions in life, the holidays, his milestones, his kids' milestones, his friends, um, and he just, he, everyone, was, everyone was welcome. I, I watched it for the, the past 34 years. Um, it's no surprise to see how many friends he had and, and really how loved he was, because as much as we loved him, you know, he, he gave it out. And I, that's the, that's the, I hope the, the takeaway from this here is really how, uh, you know, how special a person he was, we all know that, and um, how much of an impact someone like that can make on, on all of our lives. So that's all. Emily, um, and I am TJ's niece, or one of his many nieces, um, and Uncle T was the definition of the uncle who's just always there. You know, he's graduation, your surgeries, and we've had a few of those in our family. <laughs> um, you know, he's always there with a box of donuts or just, you know, anything to help you get through it, um, but most especially a sarcastic comment about whatever the situation is. And I just remember two weeks ago, we were at the Sullivan's house for Aaron's confirmation. Um, and I was telling him about how I was finishing up my master's degree. And when we were leaving, I gave him a hug goodbye and he was like, oh, congrats on your master's. It's no executive degree or anything, but you know, it, it's, it's okay. <laughs> and you know, uh, that just sums up to me who he was. He always was there to congratulate you, be there for you, um, but he always had something funny to say about it. Hey everybody, my name is Greg and um, I'll keep it clean. I have a lot of dirt on TJ, but um, you know, a lot of it's recorded too. No kidding, I'm kidding, kidding. But I, I, I um, uh, my kids went to St. Elizabeth's uh, for a couple, a couple of years that Dad's Night started, and then and then we left. And then the year, so so uh, for those of you who don't know, I do the video. I was doing the, helping out with the videos for 
uh, for Dad's Night, and it was hysterical uh, making all of these uh, videos over the years. So that was at least six years ago that I was out of the school and out of Dad's Night. So the next year, TJ calls, okay, we're, we're doing Dad's Night. And I'm like, well, TJ, I'm, I'm, when my kids are out of the school, no, no, yeah, <laughs> we still need help. And I, you know, roped me in, thankfully, you know, to, to continuing doing all the, all this, this year, these, all these years with Dad's Night. And um, so um, I, uh, you know, I just want to let everybody know I'm fine. I am fine right now. So don't, no, no one gets scared, but it was 2016. I had a heart attack. April, day after thanks, uh, day after Easter, Monday morning. And again, I'm fine now, I, you know, stents and all that stuff. Anyway. I was in the hospital for four days at Valley, and pro I think it was on the, the second day that I was there. I'm, I'm in the bed, and I'm like napping or something. I get aw awoken, and I'm like, it's TJ and Tim. And TJ's like, listen, I heard of a lot of excuses on how to try to get out of Dad's night. This one ain't working. <laughs> this one's not working. So anyway, quick one, but uh, you know, just, uh, just, he was so funny and uh, a great guy. And if I can just, you know, say something else, uh, you know, the, the other night at, uh, at uh, Aldo's when we, when we hung out there a little bit, you know, I was, this whole week I've been trying to think of what it is about him. I mean, just a, the word I came up with was wellspring, you know, wellspring, just, okay. I can only imagine, you know, being in the house growing, growing up, you know, every day, like, all right, we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna do this today. We're gonna, we're gonna do this, man. And I'd probably be the first or second person he called to or we're going to record this. So anyway, I just you know, as we all do, I I, I love them, and um, you know, he'll, he'll he'll always be right here. So thanks so much. Hi, my name is uh, Danny Meehan. Um, I am TJ's cousin, so I've known him my entire life. Um, and I was thinking about this, because I now, born and raised in Boston, so we're the Boston contingent, so we always get booed and stuff like that. When I come down here, we have to hear all that stuff. Now I live out in St. Louis, so I feel like I get a little bit of a buffer and a little bit of applause. But TJ's been part of my life, even though I, we haven't been a part of our, you know, our lives for a while. But the thing about TJ for me is that, and I think people can relate to this, no matter how long it's been since you see TJ, when you saw TJ, it was instantaneous, like nothing stopped. For me, it was always continuous. Um, and it was always like random stuff. I went out to Scranton for, with some friends after I went to college, I was graduated. And all of a sudden, he's in a bar with Mara. Like, out of nowhere, like, what are you doing here? Out on a date, um, he's there in New York City. I'm like, what are you doing here? Like, he just, he, he, he's like, you know, he's short, he's the left front. He just pops up wherever. Um, but every time you with him, it was always fun. It was like he was the, he was the match, he was the fuse, he was the firecracker. The whole thing, just, you just knew it was going to be fun. Um, the story that always sticks in my head, and I have to call out one of my other cousins on this because she ratted us out. Back in Jerk. Back, so every year we would go down to Avon for, for Easter. Every single time. And it was a big deal because we'd go to Belmont Fishing Club, all this other stuff. We got back to the house in Avon. And we're, I'm trying to think of the age, but we're young. And it, people are going to be like, oh my God. But I'm telling it anyway. I don't care. <laughs> TJ and I were outside playing, doing whatever. And we noticed something on the street. And we pick it up. It was a magazine. It was a Playboy. Gold for young little boys. Kind of thing. Like, oh my God, what is this? We only read the articles, I promise. <laughs> but at the end of the day, we got in one of our other cousins found us and had it. We hit it, we, we got this whole thing. And it was just one of those things that like with TJ, we always had this like goofy, weird stuff where something like happened. He sells me down the river because I'm the older cousin and I should know better. But at, at the end of the day, 
it was always like those kinds of things that we would laugh about and just having those moments, whether it was in, in Caldwell or down the shore, all that stuff, you know, is what I think of, you know, when I think about TJ and um, he definitely dated up and when he met you more, cause I was, I think it was Christmas or one of those things with the house in Caldwell and I'm like, how did he pull this off? That's like the biggest thing of all. So he was very lucky to have you and to have all these kids that came out of it. Um, and that's just, that's for me, that's just TJ. And that's all I got.